One thing Floridians can all agree on, the need to slather on that sunscreen if you'll be soaking up the sunshine state's rays. But Senator Linda Stewart says some sunscreens have unintended consequences. Oxybenzone and oxinate, those two chemicals are the ones that are responsible for bleaching of coral reefs, for uh, impacts to our uh, fisheries, to shrimp. The senator filing a bill to require prescriptions to use sunscreens containing those chemicals. I'm all for sunscreens, uh, and I'm just asking people to reprogram their uh, product if they contain these two chemicals. Now, of course, the bill is not sitting well with everybody, including some doctors out there. And joining us right now is Dr. Matthew Knight. He's the president of the Florida Society of Dermatology and Dermatologic Surgery. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks for having me. And again. you came bearing gifts. On I, this did. I did. I did some have? proper sun safe behavior. But I want to talk about this bill because I think mean, it's really important. But you, you understand where the bill comes from, right? Sure. It's protecting the environment and so forth. But it, it comes with a trade off. Yeah, the problem is this isn't settled science. There's, mm -hmm. there's tons of different research pieces that show that, that these sunscreen ingredients may harm the coral. Reefs. There's yeah. others that show that there's no harm to coral reefs. There's a study in South Florida showing that it's a bacterium, not a toxin. There, there was another study that went in the middle of the ocean where there's no sunscreen to be found, and uh -huh. they found coral bleaching. So, so okay. scientists, doctors know that this isn't a settled issue, and it's way too soon. It's irresponsible to try to withdraw 75% of commercially available sunscreens because it may or may not harm coral reef because we're in the middle of a melanoma epidemic in our state. Are we really? We are. Oh, okay. Central Florida, in, in, in Florida in general, has more skin cancer cases than anywhere else, a person dies of melanoma every single hour. 600 Floridians died of melanoma last year, and we know that sunscreens save lives. So that is the, that's the trade-off that we're talking about yeah, right it, there. It's yeah, it's different than plastic bags. Like, I'm a big supporter of the single-use plastic ban in Orlando because that is a convenience issue, yeah. and we need to look out for our waterways and our natural resources. But this is about saving lives. Uh -huh. If you take 75% of the commercially available sunscreens away from people, they're not going to use them. What is it in the 25% that makes it, it okay? Why don't we make the, the other 75, mm -hmm. just like the 25. Whatever those chemicals are, let's take them out. Well, we have a big problem in this country. In the Obama era, there was a piece of legislation called the Sunscreen Innovation Act, which hoped to spur the technology to increase the amount of sunscreens available to mm -hmm. us. But in that decade, we've had no new sunscreens available to us. So there's very few ingredients we can use. There are some that Senator Stewart alludes to, something called zinc oxide, okay. which is an inert metal. It doesn't okay. interact with anything. But the problem is it's more expensive. It uses nanotechnology, which some people don't like. Mm -hmm. And it's it's chalky for some people, so it's not as cosmetically okay, not as elegant. That's what dermatologists would say. Okay. So it's not the same thing. People don't use enough sunscreen as it is. We, we are in the middle of an epidemic. We can't take that resource away from people and make it harder yeah. for Floridians and tourists to protect themselves from malignant melanoma. Because then it just would run wild. You brought some uh, some stuff here for us to look at. I was surprised at this. This is the amount of sunscreen a person should yeah. put on. So we you brought it in the shock list. I think it all depends on the acreage that we're talking about that we got to cover here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. This I is need a goblet for some people. You know, <laughs> right here. This is on, <laughs> it's on average. Well, this is a shot glass of sunscreen. It's a lot. Right, so people don't. Is that use, a lot? Okay. This a lot. People don't use enough as it is, and it, 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 people say they slap a little bit on and call it done. Right. They call you done. Yeah. yeah. So, or you just go for the shoulders or right behind right. the ears. This is it, where I really get. You it, know. It doesn't work that way. No, and, okay. and I wanted to make the point today, uh, as a doctor and as the president of the state society, that this kind of legislation is irresponsible okay. because it's going to compound the melanoma epidemic. But sunscreens are just a tool in the fight against malignant melanoma. You got to cover up the kids with cover rash up. guards like this. Got your Gilligan hats. hat going on here. Yeah. And they put SPF in this hat too. They do. Yeah, that's one of those special hats, That's UV 400 good. sunglasses to protect the eyeballs yeah. from, uh, from UV radiation. Listen, we get a ton of UV radiation in Florida. Right. A lot of us are not uh, prepared for this. We need to protect ourselves. And it, it's amazing how quickly you can go from getting a nice healthy glow to being burned. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, a person dies every hour from malignant melanoma, and it's all about prevention. Prevention. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you for coming on in and sharing your thoughts with us on this. Thanks for having me, as all always. Right. We'll follow it. All right, Danielle.